defend the model no abuse and today we're going to do spotter light servicing on this the old girl a lot of the uh, 2.4 transit engines are all out warranty and it's now come up to the last few years of the 2.2s they're now going to be finishing their uh, warranty period so a lot more people are going to think about home servicing what they're going to do well here's my little guide run you through the things how to maintain your 2.2 tdci engine do the best filters and be able to maintain it to the highest standard so so what I started to say is, always the best is, no matter what the age of it is, whether it's still in warranty or not, always use genuine parts. Genuine filters, best things for it. They ain't going to give you any hassle, they're made to the right standards, and they haven't had any corners cut in the manufacturing process. Really is a vital thing, you've got to make sure that you have the right filters for the job. If you do feel that OEM is fine, then man filter, they, they're starting to do the um, oil filters etc etc. So you can still get a decent quality filter, but you save a bit less. So you save a bit more, and it's all it's all better for you. So what we're going to do, we'll go through the process. You've got your filters. Next to us say is oils. EP90, same thing that's always been used in the axles. Remember, on these defenders, rather than the earlier ones, cold climate powder is, it goes in the power steering fluid. It's no longer ATF, so don't make that mistake, or it'll be very costly in the long run. And then we'll go through and gearbox. Remember, I said gearbox 80,000 miles before even before the first recommended change. I'd say ignore that as soon as you get the vehicle, change that blooming gearbox oil. It's not very good from the factory, and you'll really benefit in the long run from better protection. Stuff to recommend Castrol Sintrans, multi vehicle 7590. 2.2 litres go in it on a refill, so it's drain out and you measure 2.2, it's not a level bung. 2.2 litres go in that, easy way of remembering it, and that sorts you out for the gearbox oils, really, and then you can change it every four years or so, whatever your mileage is really, but it's one of those things where fluids is definitely cheaper than a new gearbox. Moving on, engine oil. We've got, EP, uh, so we've got um, Miller's XF Long Life, I'll read the specs for you, it's Ford M2C934B, or JLR 035005 and that is a low saps engine oil for the vehicles fitted with the DPF filters so it's all good and it's not gonna it's not gonna harm your DPF filter or clog it up you really have got to have a low saps oil for yourselves elsewise you really could run into trouble and it's not again fuel fluids and filters a lot cheaper than a new engine and then we can got a bit of diesel ready to fill the fuel filter up but I'll go through that when I do the fuel filter Either way, got the other tools, got my drain pans, got a bit of rag, got the removal tools, we're all good and set to go. So, first of all, I will start with the diesel filter. Okay, so here we are, doing the fuel filter. So, first of all, got a, a little twist here. Wiggle, off she comes. Make sure there's no crap and rubbish in there. And that's that. As you can see, top of the filter housing, fuel filter itself, all sat in there. What you want to do? Best thing. We get too excited. Get it clean off. Make sure there's no contaminations or anything or mud stuck up in the inside there. So when you do remove it, you're not going to introduce any nasty stuff back into the system. Now that's done, we can now sidle in underneath and this is where you've got to be quick because as soon as you start doing this, we'll make sure you don't get too much air in the system so have your new filter ready to go, filled with diesel or pre-filled. So, Turn, filter off, drop it to your bolt for a second, new filter on, up, you can see where the lock position is, up, you push them in so it clunks, then forward, twist tight, and then quickly then, you've got to run forward, prime the vehicle, and fire up the engine. 
make sure it runs. Right, next we're going to do nip underneath, undo the sump plug, and you drop the oil, and whilst the oil's draining, you can then change the air filter up top. What you're going to need 30 mil of socket because you've got to go onto the sump plug and the sump plug will be discarded because every time you do a service on one of these always fit a new sump plug it's not worth the risk if this little thing falls out if the threads are damaged or that little rubber seal gets too old as you can see if that falls out you're absolutely stuffed so wouldn't recommend it oil filter on the later 2.2s from vin da onwards there is a spin-on canister the early ones share the same as the 2.4s and what they are is a paper little cartridge that you stick inside a removable plastic thing. It's a 27mm socket for that one. That's an easy one to remove, but like I said, the later ones have gone much more convenient than gone with these. Again, genuine parts, even it does say for Moco, Ford Motor Company on the on the front there. So you can tell where Land Rover are getting their filters from. So what we're gonna do is slip underneath, let's drain the old oil. expecting is to happen is the chaos to break loose and oil to go bloody everywhere are we ready kids seven litres of hot oil down my arm any second now <laughs> come off there I then recommend is pulling this pin out of this connector it gives you a bit more freedom and room to move because this next bit is a little bit of so you've got a clip there you've also got a clip there to do Now you don't want to drop that into your filter. Not a good start. Then let's lift the filter out. This one's done about 8,000 miles, so really it should still be in good, rude health for the state of that. 8,000 miles. Always clean your air filter regularly. What we're going to do, clean up the inside of that. Join me when we come to refit it. The inside there. Secret success to a clean and lovely engine. What do we do now? Put the bag. Bam. Satin. Come along here, you can see you've got this lip all along this edge. Make sure it sits inside because if you don't get the air filter secured down, you won't be sucking in nice, lovely filtered air, you'll be filling in the muck. And if you're unlucky, you could, when you go for a puddle, try and inhale air from the engine bay instead of through the air filter network. Not something recommended. So, let me put it back on your stand. Zoom you in. Look at that. So, what do you do? Get 
this those hooks tucked in under there. There we go, all done and dusted. Best way I can say of doing it is you slide it along an angle with force. And it's literally, it does, as soon as it goes in, you think you're such an idiot for struggling, but they, they are hard to do. In, click. Right, welcome back underneath. As you can see, it's all going well. That's what we do. Put the knee sump plug back in again. 99.9% is all drained out, so. Oh, that's the threads. In we go. That's done up there. We'll come back to talking that one in a moment. It's just a, it's just enough that it's in place. It's obviously oil everywhere. That's good. Find reason underneath. Take the oil filter off. Very simple. Hopefully, there we go. I'll show you. Uh, and turn, turn. There we go. Cut the turns off. As predicted. Now it's time for me to get half a gallon of oil down my arms. Just got to man it up, get on with it. Keep going, it's a very long thread. And we're off. And in! And then you go, where's my rag? <laughs> oh dear. And people wonder why they pay carriages for it. What we've got to do, make sure that you haven't left the uh, washer on there or anything like that. That's all good. Push around. Filter in position. Then with completely and utterly soaked oily hands, you've got to try screwing back on again. Don't have to wrench these things up hard, it's just enough to keep it on there. Did you get it quick clean? off leaking oil we're all good now just get a torque wrench or torque some plug up to the right torque which is 23 so newton meters and we'll top it up with the oil the capacity for these seven liters so I'm gonna bung the first five in and then we shall then go from there and make sure it's incremented and topped up in the right manner so it's the right mark on the dipstick. So right, please have a decent measuring jug. I've already put a gallon in. You can see the measurements, half, one, one and a half. So put this in, this is gonna add up to six and a half liters. Once this is in, we'll check the dipstick. And one of these pouring jugs and a decent funnel. Life is a lot simple. You ain't pouring oil all over the side of your engine. Look at that. See. see where the dipstick is. Just remember, all takes a little time to go down on these, so 
Don't be surprised if he, he marks off a little. What I do, check it, dip it. There we go. Check the engine oil. Do you can see that? That's where I've run it, let it settle, and that's where it's come to. So, just got to put a little bit more in. We'll be a happy camper. Excellent. Job done. By now, you've probably wondered, as you've probably caught on earlier, why I said 8,000 miles when I changed the air filter. It's not a very standard thing. No, it's not. Actually, you should do it about every six. Land Rover recommend every 12. But as I'm now using the old girl as a bit more of a daily driver, I've decided that it actually needs bringing down to 6,000 miles. But the key moment that made me realise it, the oil service indicator come on. Now, a few of you asked on the forums and you said, my oil service indicator lights come on. Um, can I reset it and not? To be honest, on the 2.2, it is there because it is recognised that due to the DPF and how it partially regenerates using post-injection um, regeneration for the DPF, diesel actually gets into the oil and that reduces its efficiency to lubricate. So therefore, it is really is a bad thing to allow it for so long. So what you'll find is when you first start your Defender up, when you turn the ignition on, you'll get the indicator light, which I'll show you. You see, it starts up. It says oil service and you think oh no what do i do well apparently brake and throttle hard down turn the ignition on hold it there for 15 That's seconds and now you get oil warning light starts flashing so turn the ignition off they say wait for two okay. minutes two minutes is up i don't know if this is going to work let's turn the ignition on let's see Ignition on. Yep, oil service light has been cleaned. It's all cleared, it's all good, so that method works. So in case you didn't catch it before, what you're gonna do is turn the ignition off, foot hard on the brake, one foot hard on the accelerator pedal, both depressed at the same time, turn the ignition on, let it go there for 15 seconds, you'll keep it down for a whole 15 seconds. Once it's up, you'll notice that the oil the oil warning light will start flashing and once it's done keep your feet on the pedals turn the ignition off and then wait two minutes and when you come to turn it back on the lights all off so that's how you reset your service indicator hopefully it's some use to you and for the, for the home mechanics for people who get into the age of vehicles now where they want to home service their vehicles and hopefully it's all good i'm going to wrap it up there now for the for the for the basic service of a 2.2 defender 2.4 I believe is quite similar as well so it's, um, if you've got any questions ask below in the comments section I'll get round and ask and um, sort them out for you um, we're gonna say now for the service I'm gonna crack on now I'll check the diff level oils I'm gonna check the brakes pull all the wheels off and everything else that's all simple regime surface you can also find but again if you want a guide ask me I'll make one up for you thank you very much see you later next time